Good morning. Our topic today is discipleship and the individual. Now, what comes to mind when we think about our individual responsibility or call to Christ? Uh, we as humans by nature seek relationships. We seek community. We seek identity, whether that be in sports or the church or politics, whatever it be. We seek meaning in people around us to, to belong, to have a sense of belonging. And what I, I think these, this passage is going to show today and this quote that I'm going to read is the need for us to realize that Christ's call is a radical call to put all the natural inclinations of the flesh and of the world and of belonging aside to follow him. And this is why it was a hard call. This is why many left sad when he would call them because it's calling them in a sense to leave all. Let's read the passage and we'll explain more. And this is, these are sometimes known as the hard sayings of Christ, right? The, the things that are a little bit confusing and hard for us to grasp. Luke 14, verse 26, we read, If any man cometh unto me, and hateth not his own father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, oftentimes people say, well, I thought God wants us to love everyone. Why does he want us to hate those that are even closest to us? Well, he doesn't really want us to hate anyone in the sense of how we think of hate. This is obviously a hyperbole, much like the Sermon on the Mount, where he says, pluck out your eye, right? He doesn't want to really want us to pluck out eyes, but it's to exaggerate the point, to say, it's better to pluck out your eye than it would be to sin and be cast into hell. So that's true. But the point is, he doesn't want you to sin. So he's making this uh, statement to really drive home the point. And here, um, often hate can be a metaphor for love less than. But the, the idea here is that our devotion to Christ, to follow Christ, that it, it should be so radical. It should be so, our, our love for him should be so vast that these other human relationships almost seem like hatred, right? And that they, for sure, we love them less, that he is of primacy. That's why he goes and he calls the disciples and says, follow me, and they leave everything behind. And this is what elsewhere, when he says to others, come follow me, and people say, well, I can't, I got, you know, my, my dad, I gotta go bury him, which, you know, it means he probably hasn't even died yet, but let, let, let me take care of my family business and then I'll follow you, you know, or let me take care of this business back home and then I'll follow you. And Jesus says, no, any man who, uh, puts his hand to the plow and looks back, is not fit for the kingdom of God, right? Uh, and that's another verse. But the, this idea is we need to continue, uh, not just continue, but we need to drop all to follow Christ. And, that, and that's that's not a message that is very popular today. Uh, we like this idea of progressive sanctification, which is absolutely true. Bonhoeffer hits on this idea in here, that we can slowly start to dis disassociate from the world and follow after Christ more and more. Now, God doesn't say, does sanctify us like that, right? In our spirit and our soul and how we think about things. But the call is radical. It's drop all and follow me. Now, let me read, let me get to the reading here so we don't take too much time because I think this is one of the harder ones to really uh, soak in. The call of Jesus teaches us that our relation to the world has been built on an illusion. All the time, we thought we had enjoyed a direct relation with men and things. This is what had hindered us from faith and obedience. Now we learn that in the most intimate relationships of life, in our kinship with father and mother, brother and sisters, and married love, and in our duty to the community, direct relationships are impossible. Since the coming of Christ, his followers have no more immediate realities of their own, not in their family relationships, nor in the ties with their nation, nor the relationship formed in the process of living. Between father and son, husband and wife and individual and nation, stands Christ the mediator, whether they are able to recognize him or not. We cannot establish direct contact outside of ourselves except through him, through his word, and through our following of him. To think otherwise is to deceive ourselves. So stay with me here. I think he's, our, our direct belonging is to Christ apart from all, everything else. Let's keep going. But since we are bound to abhor any deception which hides the truth from our sight, we must of necessity repudiate any direct relationship with the things of this world, and that for the sake of Christ. Wherever a group, be it 
large or small, prevents us from standing alone before Christ. Whether such a group raises a claim of immediacy, it must be hated for the sake of Christ. For every immediacy, whether we realize it or not, means hatred of Christ. And this is especially true where such relationships claim the sanction of Christian principles. Man, that stood out to me. If I had a dollar for every time somebody told me about a new movement or a new group, and it's really good, I know it's not the Bible, but it's built on Christian principles. I'd be a rich man. I've been to many of those meetings. And they're not bad ideas, but the idea is that they're trying to draw you to this group away from the church to say, this is where the real truth is at. I mean, the Bible's good and church is good and you might get a lot out of it, but this is where you're gonna get the true financial wisdom or how to grow a business or how to be a, a true patriot or how, to, how we're gonna take our country back uh, for God. And all these things might even have a quasi-Christian ring to them. But if it's not Christ, if it's not his church, it's, it's, it's a distraction. One more paragraph. In, it is a theological error of the first magnitude to exploit the doctrine of Christ the mediator as to justify direct relationships with the things of this world. It is sometimes argued that if Christ is the mediator, he has borne all the sin which underlies our direct relationships with the world and that he has justified us in them. Jesus has reconciled us to God. We can then, it is supposed, return to the world and enjoy our direct relation with it with a good conscience. Although that world is the very world which crucified Christ. This is to equate the love of God with the love of the world. The breach which the things of the world is now branded as legalistic misinterpretation of the grace of God, the, the purpose of which, we fondly suppose, is to spare us the necessity of this very breach. The saying of Christ about hating our immediate relationships is thus turned into a cheerful affirmation of the God-given realities of this world. Once again, the justification of the sinner has become the justification of sin. I know that might sound confusing, but he's saying what people do is justify and rationalize how this thing over here, our patriotism or love of country, is really a good thing that's tied to Christianity, therefore I can totally embrace it above Christ. And he's saying what happens is we totally reverse the call of Christianity. We totally make it something where we love this more than Christ, right? How many people love God or say they love God and go to church, but their real identity is in their love of country or business or some some other group right which as i said has has uh, more meaningful or, or more applicational truths and all these things are distractions guys and, and this was really challenging me right because it's very easy to get wrapped up maybe even a, a denominational distinction and that's that's where my identity is but it, but it's not word and sacrament it's not the people of god that you're around right we need to be careful not to let those things overshadow us and define us it is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who defines us. It's the people he has called us to and our community to love. Um, and, and even our communities, right? I'm talking, about, I'm talking about church communities. But not allowing the communal aspect, which is very important, to overshadow God's call upon my life. Because I can't be a community member apart from understanding who I am in Christ. Have a blessed day. We'll see you guys tomorrow.